The purpose of this video is to provide a clear guideline in passing the SEMA operational level case study. You will know that the case study answers are marked based on a competency framework. Therefore, whatever the answers you type has to be within the guidelines of the competency framework. Let's see what the competency framework looks like. It has four key elements and integration to combine all four together. So the first competency framework element is technical. This will test the knowledge and the specialized areas based on the operational level syllabus, which is P1, F1, and E1. So that is technical. The next one is business. This will mainly test the ability of the student to understand a given business situation. This mainly tests P1, F1, and E1, because all three has to be integrated to provide a business solution. The next variable is people. This will look at how staff are integrated into decision making. This mainly tests E1. The next element is leadership. Leadership looks at how a particular decision can be implemented within the organization. This again tests E1. So the competency framework has four areas, technical, business, people, and leadership. I call it TBPL. Then there's another element called integration. You will get marks for integration based on combining these factors and how you are able to provide an overall view in the answer to a particular problem. Now let's look at specifically on operational level case study, taking an example how to develop an effective answer. Let's assume there's an organization which is planning to implement activity-based costing by replacing the existing traditional costing system. So the requirement is to implement an activity-based costing system, replacing the traditional accounting system. Let's look at the technical aspect. Clearly, this looks at P1, looking at overhead absorption, cost classification, cost unit, and the methodology in which the cost is allocated to business processes. So you will get marks when you apply the technical aspect in the answer. Let's look at the business element. Of course, this will change the manufacturing system and also the accounting treatment of the cost and the overheads, looking at F1 and also E1 because it's related to business. Then look at the people element. This has to focus on the thinking of people, how they look at change, whether they like to accept it or not. Clearly, the criteria is on E1. Then the final element is leadership. Again, E1, where you look at who's responsible for implementing activity-based costing and how it will be implemented within the organization overall. Then finally, the integration. We have to look at the overall concept on a result-oriented perspective. So that is how you look at TBPL. Let's develop an effective answer. Now I'm going to develop the first paragraph of the answer, which is based on T, technical. We can write like this. The company can reduce the overheads by 15% through the improvement of efficiency by applying activity-based costing principles. So we are focusing on reducing the cost by 15% through efficiency improvement. You get one mark now for technical because you clearly emphasize the technical knowledge on P1. So you get one mark for it now. Then the second paragraph, we can look at business. So let's see how to use that criteria of cost reduction. We can say, the company can reduce the selling price by 8% based on the cost reduction, thereby targeting a higher market share based on a wider customer base. Therefore, you can target a 
wider customer base. How did you target the wider customer base? From the first paragraph of reducing overheads by 15%. The, share, the selling price can be reduced to a certain degree, maybe 8, maybe 10. I'm just providing an example. So you get one mark now for business skills. How do you get one mark for business skill? Because you focus on the customer and you focus on the selling price. And that is always business. Let's move on to the next category, which is people. So we can say, introducing activity-based costing requires changing the current methods and the decision making the people has to be trained and they should change the existing decision making there will be resistance to change now we are talking about e1 resistance to change we know people resist to change now you are directly hitting the examiner's guideline okay now we have a problem of change why it associates people. So let's move on to the next criteria now. We are looking at getting the fourth mark, which is what? Leadership. So we can say the company should appoint a person with specific responsibility to implement activity-based costing. Now we handle the leadership criteria, but we can justify the answer by saying this person should demonstrate very high interpersonal skill and should be able to build confidence and trust among the workplace. Now that is important. Now we got four marks based on technical, business, people and leadership. Now that's not enough. We can get another mark based on what? Integration. As I told you, everything has to be connected to provide an overall view. So we can say in the next paragraph, we can say implementing activity-based costing will facilitate, facilitate the reduction in cost and thereby introducing new products. The company will be able to launch a new product effectively and efficiently better than competition and creating a competitive advantage. This will focus on speed of delivery and decision making. Now you can see how effectively it is integrated. So if I summarize what I said, now we have obtained five marks by typing five clear paragraphs, each paragraph with a clear focus on the competency framework. Now you will realize how to pass the operational level case study all depend on the student ability to understand the question, understand the competency framework, and develop an answer. Is writing skill, typing skill important? Oh yes. Is English and vocabulary important? It's a must. With my experience, no two students are the same. I'm talking about 18 years and lecturing for more than 30,000 students. I have never come across similar answers. Each student is unique. Each student type based on your background, the knowledge, ideology, and perception. We are all unique. It's my responsibility to understand the level of each student and develop a personalized strategy to ensure a clear pass in the operational level case study exam. Thank you for listening. Good luck for your future studies.